Um, hopefully we won't be interrupted again. We'll see how that goes. Um, so, uh, the agenda, I have it here somewhere. Right. Um, updates on projects we know and love. Um, interest list. The interest list project yet again has defeated my prediction that they would put out a project viewer. Um, I don't really know what the story with that is. Um, but it will appear sooner or later. Um, I don't think there will be anything mandatory you have to change, but there will be things that you can pick up at that point that will be further optimizations. Um, group bands. Uh, I checked in with Baker uh, yesterday, and he says he's just polishing the viewer changes and has a couple of corner cases to check, and he will be ready to have something out soon. So progress is being made, but there's nothing to nothing to share quite yet. Um, uh, I apologize yeah. for interruption, but I actually haven't been kept in the loop regarding this. Uh, group bans as in banning people from uh, groups, or group bans as in banning groups from Sims? No, it's in as in being able to ban someone from joining a group, an otherwise open group. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's a a feature that. Um, a bunch of people would really like to see. Uh, and seems like a good thing to have. Um, uh, animation interfaces. Uh, so at our meeting last time, I was asked whether or not some of the recently introduced improvements to manipulating animations using scripts could be, uh, we could create interfaces for viewers to do those same manipulations without having to go through the monkey business of communicating with the script and having the script do it. Um, I, I checked in with the relevant server devs and they said, yeah, in theory, we could do that. So um, I think that the, yeah, well, wait, don't, don't celebrate too quickly. Um, if there's interest in making that happen, what I'll want is for um, someone other than me to be prepared to do some of the work on the viewer side to, uh, you know, sort of figure out what the interfaces should look like and and test them and, and so on. Um, the scope of that project could be as large or as small as we think it ought to be. Uh, and I'm delighted to have that discussion with with um, um, adding the ability to manipulate animations better from the viewer including some of the new capabilities that um, that have just been introduced from LSL um, so uh, you know if we want to if we want to do that people should let me know that they're interested in working on that and and doing it it's not something I'm prepared to take on as a development project of my own right now. Um, but it's out there, and uh, the server devs did not either run screaming into the distance when I brought it up or, um, you know, slam the door in my face. So uh, that's, that's a pretty good sign. Um, and, yeah. Okay, great. Um, well, I'd be I'd be delighted to be the interface to the to the requisite changes as soon as you explain to me what they what they are, Kitty. Um, server side appearance. We have Nix who added that to the to the agenda, so I'll let him do our update on server-side appearance, which we're all enjoying. 
Yay! Hey guys, uh, just wanted to give you an update. As you guys know, uh, server-side appearance, the uh, first round of changes rolled out to the entire grid this week, and it actually went um, really smoothly. Um, also, I have the next round of changes uh, from Sunshine internal ready to push to external. Uh, I'm going to do that later today. I just wanted to speak to you guys first. Uh, in it, you'll see uh, what should be all of the new inventory capabilities for the new inventory functionality uh, for getting your current outfit folder set. Uh, these te these changes uh, appear to work on our developers' machines, but are completely untested as far as you should be concerned. Um, so this code is definitely not ready for merging into a mainline branch, but uh, feel free to uh, do a pre-merge into a side dev branch. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have anywhere where you can test against this on a server. Uh, and we have a number of other changes we want to do in this branch before we even think about um, getting it ready for an actual release. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of cleanup of the code to uh, remove the old system of faking. Um, which you guys might not want to pull in if you want to uh, support grids that don't support server-side appearance. Um, but we have a lot of changes around that, a uh, bunch more bug fixes, cleanup, uh, that kind of thing. Um, but the rollout this week went uh, really well, actually. Um, it seems to be performing well. Uh, we definitely have enough uh, ovens to do the baking with, and uh, there have only been a uh, handful of users with issues, uh, as far as I'm aware currently, uh, and I'd like to open up the floor and for uh, feedback if you guys uh, are experiencing anything different. All right, I'll, I'll open my mouth here, I guess. We're, we're seeing a significant number of people that uh, uh, they're seeing everybody gray. Uh, for the most part, uh, in my personal experience, it, it's been people with uh, bandwidth and draw distance settings that were, um, let's let's say, extreme. Um, normally, if we get them to drop their bandwidth and draw distance to a reasonable setting, it, uh, they're fixed. That's definitely good to know, um, and I'll keep that in mind if we get reports uh, of that ourselves. Uh, we have gotten a few, um, and it might be related to people using uh, cell networks, and there's a uh, JIRA file for that uh, we're starting to look into. Um, basically, the underlying cause is uh, the size of the packet that the viewer is expecting doesn't line up with how much data is actually in the packet. Um, so we're investigating that one, but that seems to be fairly, uh, uh, fairly constrained. Only a few people are hit by that one. Um, I'll definitely keep in mind the balance settings tweak. Uh, so okay. thanks for that tip. No problem. Uh, there, there's one other thing that I noticed with a couple of them. Uh, they had to disable HTTP textures in order for things to, for avatars to res for them, whether they it's their hardware or whatever, I don't know, but turning off HTTP did fix them. I expect that what's happening is that they're just hammering most likely something in the network path between them and the and the uh, and the servers by doing too many HTTP connections, which of course includes now includes avatar textures um, and by reducing the number by by shifting regular texture fetches back to UDP, they're they're reducing the load to the point where avatars can load. Uh, yeah, I, I only brought that up because I see Monty's here, and it was something that he might be interested in as well. So, right, um, if we if we get past uh, SSA specific things, I'll turn the floor over to Monty for HTTP more general things, um, because I, I think he may have an update for us, too. 
Uh, one more thing on SSA. One of the fixes that we're going to be looking at is right now the viewer uh, will request your appearance uh, far too frequently, actually, um, which isn't really a problem for the backend baking service because uh, the responses are cached and it takes uh, very little effort, effort for uh, our machines to just send you the same data again. Uh, but we do have throttling on those requests, and under certain circumstances, you can hit the throttle, uh, and that'll slow down your experience. You will eventually get a response uh, once your viewer backs off, um, but that's one of the things that we're going to be looking at uh, fixing, and hopefully that will also help uh, people who are um, having connection issues with uh, just too many requests or too many connections. Cool. Good to know. Thank you. Uh, next, I asked in local about uh, users with difficult uh, current outfit folders. We're still seeing those. Are uh, are we? How how you know if we encounter a, a basic user uh, with that issue? How do we get them fixed? Uh, so we've actually done some analysis, and we actually have a list of users who are affected by that, or a list of accounts. Um, probably most of them are uh, not actually active anymore, uh, but I'm sure a subset are. Uh, we are working on trying to uh, get a system set up uh, soon where we can flag those accounts and have them automatically fixed on their next login. Um, it's basically just automating the process that uh, support would go through now that we have the list of accounts. Uh, we're hoping that that's going to happen in the not too distant future. Um, I have instructed support uh, that it is an issue. Uh, I've told them what the fix is. Um, and to try and help people as much as they can, uh, but I don't really have um, any kind of decision-making power over uh, how support handles uh, such situations. Uh, I can just tell them what I know. Um, I have heard one report of a user who was able to move the duplicate cough to the trash and then empty the trash, uh, which is something we actually probably want to uh, helpfully fix on the back end at some point in the future, but that might be a temporary workaround uh, this weekend. Um, hopefully we can get those accounts flagged for fixes um, next week or so, but uh, we need to, it's, it's an expensive operation, so we need to go through a lot of reviewing to make sure that it's not going to create too much load. So, uh, Mr. Case has got a good question. If the use, if a basic user has to file a ticket, uh, what issue type should they use? I honestly don't have any more insight into that than uh, any of you guys do. Maybe even less. How about a, a ticket type that says, "Hey, hey, pump this to next let him deal." Uh, I can I can send them a reminder email and say if any issues come in tagged as Sun 99, um, remember this is the uh, fix for it. It'll take it shouldn't take them much time. Um, so mentioning the uh, issue either Sun 99 or multiple current outfit folders uh, might help direct them. But honestly, uh, I don't have. Um, any particular knowledge of uh, exactly how their triaging process works. Okay, thank you. I yeah, just want to make sure people are getting... But uh, hopefully that'll be an issue that'll go away once we're able to uh, 
fix the accounts that we know would be affected. Um, hopefully that'll be pretty soon. It might be worthwhile running that check in another week or so just to make sure there aren't any new accounts being created with the same new accounts that are that are popping up with the same problem that hadn't had it. Uh, from from my knowledge, the current uh, batch of viewers that actually work with server side appearance shouldn't allow that situation to happen again. Um, if that is not the case, uh, we definitely would like to know about that. Uh, we certainly haven't been able to uh, reproduce. Um, we haven't been able to break any accounts using the Linden Viewer. Um, and from my discussion so far, it sounds like uh, the other third party viewers, um, at least in their current releases, uh, aren't able to uh, generate the problem again. Yeah, you know how often it happens that should not happen, a code paths get executed. Yes, uh, that, that I am aware. Mostly when there's either a company vice president or a major customer watching. That's that's the typical trigger. Um, okay. Um, uh, how soon will regions be available for new Sunshine viewer changes? Um, I think that's still TBD. I don't, I don't think we know. Yeah, I I don't have any um, estimate whatsoever for that. Uh, we definitely need to go through a number of rounds of testing before we even uh, put it on a DD. Uh, yeah, you're right. We don't have any influence over the status page. <laughs> but I, I thought I saw, well, I don't know, maybe I was looking at the internal channel. I, I thought I saw notices about that. No, all we saw was uh, for the main channel. There was nothing went out for the RCs on the good status page. Oh. But that's minor. Oops. Uh, certainly, after we do fix the accounts that we know have multiple current outfit folders, if we see more, um, then I would very much like to know what viewers uh, those people are running uh, so that we can hunt down uh, under what circumstances uh, people can still get multiple uh, cops. Uh, any other questions about server-side appearance, whether the uh, current state or the future? Well, I'll throw out a kudo. It uh, seems to have gone very, very, very well. Um, one of the smoothest rollouts of a, of a Linden feature that I've seen since I've been working on that. The, the team exhibited extreme paranoia and it paid off big time so uh that that was that was was pretty great um okay monty um you want to bring us up to date on your impending http improvements Not too much to talk about. Uh, internally, I'm mostly trying to get uh, the bureaucratic details done with. I've got to have a QA passed on on the server side and viewer side, and I am actually trying to get a um, DNS fix in as well. This is the great DNS lookup failures problem we've had for quite a few years now. I um, think we have a fix for it, but not certain. Um, so we're trying to, oh, we, I'm trying to get a uh, project viewer in line for this. And the major feature that's going to be in this is just reducing the number of connections used by mesh, such that we can actually start turning on keep lives for mesh as well. And what I look on track to doing is reducing the mesh connection used by 
uh, 75%. We'll use one core of the connections by default. 32 is the default now. We'll go to eight and also start capping that and um, that level. And I hope that's going to be uh, a path to, uh, well, it's a necessary path to get to pipelining. But some of the things I've discovered in the past two weeks have been um, not in the code, but what practice has been. People have been trying to increase connection concurrency to solve problems. And um, I absolutely know that's had been counterproductive. Checking chat. Well, it's certainly going to be adaptive yeah, with better retry logic. In fact, there are two different retry schemes, schemes as part of this. Uh, one thing you can expect services to start doing, at least those that transit the CAPS router, is that when we throttle, we'll actually start sending a retry after header in responses. And um, this is to give a better feedback loop, uh, a more predictable feedback loop actually does have a pretty big impact on network utilization. Instead of doing SIN floods, we actually produce effective connections. Um, so we're improving that on several fronts. And I really hope that bad routers and bad connections should really get a, a kick from this, I think. And, and, and all of this is you know, sort of headed in the direction of actually beginning to do pipelining on on requests, which should be yet another uh, improvement on on overall performance. Um, but of course, there depending on depending on your network, the specific of your network connection and your system, it may well be that your texture pipeline is not actually constrained by the network at this point. It it, it could be the decoding or any number of other things. Um, yeah, it, this is definitely, most definitely a case where more is not better. Uh, so, uh, especially in terms of reliability, um, Depending on individual circumstances, more may be better for performance when there's nothing else going on, when the network between you and and the uh, and, and the servers are not are, are, is never dropping packets, uh, you know that sort of thing. But um, it's it's a, it's assuredly the case that if you get up. Into three digits, you've or more. You you, have, you are just you are just doing things that are that are grossly abusive to the network, uh, and you, you will almost certainly suffer for it. Actually, it's yeah. It, it, it's one of those things that we we've been trying to fight uh, uh, as a team. Is you know more is not better and. It, it runs the gamut from your bandwidth to your draw distance to your uh, mesh max current. Yeah, uh, but banging it into the heads of some of the users is a. Uh, uh, let me put it to this way: you got a bigger stick for me, Oz? <laughs> well, we, you know, what we may have to do if that continues to be an issue. Um, uh, well, first of all, I think it would be a really good idea, and uh, and ultimately helpful to users if if you were just to, to uh, clamp those settings. I mean, the fact that the setting exists is is really only there for for Monty's debugging purposes, um, and 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 there's there's no good reason not to clamp them uh, locally in the viewer. Um, we. We will probably, uh, you know, we will be looking hard at uh, improving the the clamping from the server side um, to just uh, to, to just push back from from the server side. We we have to be 
Uh, I think 32 is is a, is a pretty good upper bound. Um, I I think the default should probably be be much lower than that. But I'll I'll leave that for the time being to Monty. Uh, and and I think that's something that we're going to do. I, I'm already starting to get some baseline testing um, using both our viewer and yours, uh, some some of the TPBs, um, to see what the current behavior is and to develop some visualization tools. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna take a, a real hard look at that, and if we can figure out how to how to limit it from the from the server side. Uh, then basically the the uh you know it won't matter what that setting is but uh, yeah so i can uh, give a little preview of what's going to happen in the clamping area there are going to be obviously we'll get, the grid will transition over time so there will be two regimes um the old one using a mesh max setting there will be a uh, New cap and uh, a new regime, and the setting for that will be a mesh two max concurrent uh, request or the equivalent name. One is going to parallel what texture currently is, which is a default of eight. Uh, something of that sort. The um, existing setting is something we'll look at again in uh, QA, uh, but we are definitely going to bring a clamp down and it's going to be well under 100. Um, and the goal would actually be to combine and join the mesh and texture paths onto a single um, uh, channel and uh, try to actually get the connections out even further. So five or six shared connections with pipelining doing better throughput than what people are currently getting, particularly if they have high ping times. This is part of getting, making ping time irrelevant. Right. So, uh, I, um, if you, if you, if you want to, if you want to get a, um, if you want to get the technology explanation behind why lots of parallel TCP connections are not really a good thing. Um, do a Google search for congestion collapse and uh, TCP slow start and you'll 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 get into it. It it turns out that you know dropping packets murders your performance and creating lots of connections improves the likelihood of dropping packets. Um, so Uh, but um, as as I say, we're gonna we're gonna try and make this. You know, we're gonna we're gonna both be providing better better tech in the viewer to do the right thing, um, and better protection in the server against people who aren't doing the right thing. So, and on the Oz's point there, I I'll go out there a little bit, but I think this is safe to, to say. Some of our throttle controls do have memory, and when a viewer abuses them, um, it's not immediately forgiven. So people who are doing things like uh, 500 concurrent connections, that is actually being registered, and we are responding to it. And it, it is just utterly counterproductive, and that's one of those things that should just be forgotten as quickly as possible. Okay, uh, so um, do Linden Labs have any stats for the percentage of sessions that have advanced lighting mode enabled? Um, I unfortunately was not able to get um, the most recent, the real recent stats for that. The most recent ones I have that I believe are correct are from uh, like midsummer. So they're not they're not current enough 
to be very interesting anymore, I think. But uh, I will I will try to do that between now and next time. I'm I'm working on I'm I'm working on improving my ability to paw around in the database uh, without help from other people and, and and answer this sort of question myself. So, and I, I'm getting there. Um, but uh, um, actually, the one we did do one set of graphs on on uh, performance um, of uh, with and without you know with and without um, advanced lighting mode on different GPU classes, and ran across the very interesting result that if you have a class, what we call a class five GPU, um, almost everyone got better performance with advanced lighting mode turned on than with it off, um, which really surprised the heck out of me, but uh, seems to be true. So um, if you've got a really, really good graphics card, um, it will actually get better if you turn on ALM and the world will look cooler. Um, so that's, that's kind of neat. Um, and we're going to, we're going to be looking more deeply at some of those statistics and see if we can figure out why some of them are not as good as we, as we'd, we'd like. Uh, how good is really good? I, I, well, I'm just saying the, the, you know, I graphed, I graphed, uh, you know, performance with class three GPUs that had ALM off and the average performance was, you know, some, a line and then with it on and it was a, it was a lower line it, on the class threes. It was, you know, something like, I don't remember exactly, but it was something between 35 and 45% uh, degradation in performance. Um, but uh, on average, across all users everywhere, uh, and uh, and then I was very surprised that when I did the class fives, and then class fours, it wasn't as big a difference, and then class fives, it was actually flipped. the The line with ALM on was was above the other line. Uh, they're not they're not really in a in a shape where I can publish them yet. But that's that's something I'll work on. Um, I actually have been working with, we have a new statistics system, and I just spent time yesterday writing up my wish list for what I want to be able to give to the third-party viewer devs uh, in the future, and I haven't gotten a, an answer to that yet, uh, you know, a response to that wish list yet, but um, I want to get you back to the point where I can give you um, performance and and reliability versus uh, against different um, different platforms and platform versions and different GPUs and so forth. So we'll see. Uh, well, I don't know how quickly any of that will happen, but uh, since we'd like some of those reports ourselves and then tweaking them just so that I can do them for a third-party viewer is, is a relatively small change. So. We'll see. And the new system seems to be a lot easier to develop things on. Okay, so that brings me, uh, th th that begs the question. Um, is there a list of what's a class 5, a class 4, a class 3, etc.? It's it's in the GPU table. The, the class column is one of the is one of the columns in the GPU table. Um, okay. So, and there's a, there's a script in Indra no, it's not an Indra. It's in scripts, GPU under table under tester. It's a Perl script that you can give it. Uh, if you do dash dash help, it'll give you the, the, the help file. But you can feed it a list of GPU identification strings, and it will print out a, and a GPU table. And it will basically... Um, it will duplicate the algorithm that the viewer itself uses to find things in the GPU table and tell you what it found. Um, 
and and in Indra New View tests, there are files for uh, GPUs seen dot text and GPUs results dot text, which are a recent set of inputs and outputs for that for that thing. Um, we are getting uh, the GPU table updated. I saw some commits on that today, so uh, we are getting. Uh, Graham has managed to merge the set of changes from from Tank, uh, and I, I I think those are going to go out on one of the one of the maintenance branches. So that's that's on its way to you in the fullness of time uh, through the new through the new process, which. Uh, the one of the nice things about the new process is that I can't tell you what order things are going to happen in um, because nobody knows until they happen. But that seems to be working pretty smoothly, actually. So. All righty. Thank you. I'll bug tank about that one because most of what you said just went right over my head. I'm just a support guy. <laughs> yeah, the, um, it's me. Is that one? Is that branch? Let me look. Um, yeah, I will. I, I will find what branch that I saw the commit notice go by earlier today. Um, and uh, I will track it down and make sure that Tank knows which repository to watch because it, it's in one of the maintenance repos. But they they have kind of a rolling series, and I, I'm, I'm I didn't make note of which one it was in. We would like to get that out pretty soon, though, because it it's a desperately needed update. Other uh, other issues? We've used up our agenda. Uh, what was the rationale for merging them? Um, we just have too many candidates in flight. Um, so we're trying to come up. We'd, we'd like it to be true that there aren't any more than two or three um, candidates out there at any one time, because otherwise we get to the point where we've we've got, you know, we've got five or six out there and we've got three that look like they're perfectly good to promote. And then what do you do? Right. You have to you have to only do you can only promote one. So. Um, We'd like it to be true that we have a smaller set of choices. Um, and those, the Chewy branch and the Snowstorm branch, were both looking very, very good. So we figured we'll combine them, give them a week, and then maybe we'll be able to get them out. Um, which I haven't looked at the stats today, but uh, last time I did, they were looking pretty good. So um, And yeah, it's not it's not bad. So those those are coming. Um, yes, there are a bunch of project viewers coming, um, but I I don't really have a I'm I'm a I've got one for snowstorm in QA now, um, and uh, as Nick said, there's at some point there's a there's a, another sunshine one coming. Um, and uh, there will be one for the new HTTP work coming pretty soon. Um, and there are a couple of other projects that we haven't announced yet. So uh, I have not gotten an update on that. 
Um, I will try to get one over the next few days, but um, all I keep seeing is notices that that's been pushed back a week at roughly one week intervals. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's using Scrum, right? Um, using it the way it's supposed to be used. Just any uh, any other issues, questions before we break up? Um, just are you going to drag Baker along in two weeks? <laughs> uh, I'm sure he will. I'm sure he will be here as soon as there's something to to publish. Um, I I decline to predict whether that will be in two weeks. Um, there is one new thing coming that should be out by two weeks from now, and I won't tell you what it is, so don't miss next time. <laughs> Come on. You gotta give me some slack here. I gotta have I gotta have some way to have fun. Well, well, you know the best way to get Baker here is tell us that he won't be here. That that, that generally works well, doesn't it? Might work. We'll see. Okay, folks. Don't, I don't think we're tell done. Me we're letting you out of here 15 minutes early. Well, 14 minutes early. Come on. Well, somebody's got to come up with something to keep Oz busy. That's that's it. I, there, actually, I have more than enough to keep me busy. That we're we're having a uh, we're having a an office outing at my house tomorrow, and I'm not nearly ready. So I need to get off Second Life and go back to fixing things up in the real world. Good thing you're in the Boston office and not the uh, Battery uh, Street office. No, no, not not out there. Didn't you just tell everybody to telecommute and use SL instead? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, okay. We get those real life teleports fixed for us then. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get right on that. <laughs> Thanks, Oz. Bye, everybody. And Nick and Monty. Thank you all. Have fun, us. Have fun, us. And poof. Babe, wake up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's go home then. Okay. <laughs>